Hey there, Maniacs viewers, you watching the Main Man channel. It's not just a name, it's a way of life. You got to improvise, adapt, and overcome each and every day just to make it in this cruel old world. Appreciate y'all watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. That, anyways, that being said, the topic of today's video is continuing with our safety theme. We're going to uh, talk about carry positions, you know, ways of concealed carry and how I do it. And uh, we're also going to talk about some uh, shooting stances. And uh, these are very important with the, when it comes to pistol safety and concealed carry safety and uh, the whole nine yards when it comes to that and being a self-protector. Uh, some disclaimers on that, though, will be this. One of those disclaimers is, one of those disclaimers is the two firearms that I am using in this video. I no longer carry right now. I switch out carry firearms a lot. Uh, one of them is the Remington RP9, and the other one was the Kimber Micro 9. Well, the Remington RP9, they were notorious for taking a heck of a break-in period. So that being said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to you unless you knew ahead of time it was going to take a heck of a break-in period if you ever bought one. You can't get them new anymore, I don't think. I think you can only get them used anyway. Now, the Kimber Micro 9, yeah, you can buy those new even today. And I used to think the Kimber Micro 9 was awesome. And the Kimber Micro 9 was super, super, super accurate. But the thing about it was the magazine reliability and the reliability of the firearms is, is is just not there. The firearm was just not reliable enough for me. So that being said, I couldn't, you couldn't pay me to carry a Kimber Micro 9. And I wouldn't recommend it on anybody. And I don't promote that firearm. The only reason I'm sharing this video, and like I like say, it's a re-release of old content, it's an older video, is because I think the information that I share in this is a little bit relevant. You'll also see the fact that uh, when I'm in the high compressed ready position in it, I'm not really angling the muzzle of the weapon down towards the ground that much, just slightly, but I was in an area to where I was outside, the firearm was cleared, it didn't really matter I was in a very very safe area for the maneuvers that I were doing in the shooting through the shooting stances and through the walking around but the thing with that is too also if in a real life situation with a loaded firearm I would definitely make sure that muzzle was definitely down more towards the ground but it was not loaded and we were in a safe area and it could be considered down range the area I was at any of those areas basically because because I was just doing some demonstrations and stuff with it. I mean, somebody will complain about that probably, but it is what it is. I think I share a lot of good, useful information in this video. You check it out. It's continuing with the safety series. And uh, anyways, that being said, without further ado, here's the video. Oh, and also, none of these firearms here are featured in this video, but it looked like a cool... Uh, thumbnail to use because it had uh, several different kinds of holsters on it you know and we're talking about several different ways of carry so that being said it just might look like a cool video a cool thumbnail for the video so let's get it on we're going to talk a little bit about ways to conceal carry and uh, just a generalization of a lot of ways to do it the ways i do it and what i carry and what I did pocket notes before, so I'm just going to pull the two firearms out. That's all I'm going to do. I got two firearms on me today. And uh, I'm going to go into a few stances too. And I'm going to go into uh, what I think is the proper draw. And uh, the draw I've been practicing that's in my, uh, in some of the classes I took and everything like that. Okay. So that being said, I have in the four o'clock position. Sorry about the skin, but it is what it is. Remington RP9, right? It is hot. I mean, carry it today. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna make it safe. I'm gonna drop the magazine first. Hold it in a safe direction. I'm gonna kick out the one in the chamber. Okay, now the gun. My arm is safe. You verify it. I verify it. All right. Now, also in a pocket holster, 
I have my Kimber Micro 9, and it is hot. It's a single action pistol. The safety is on. We're going to make it safe. So first of all, what i got to do this, drop the magazine, flip off the safety, hold it in a safe direction, eject, the round is in the chamber. And there she is. So we're safe. We're good. In the Kimber Micro 9, I believe I've got Core Bond 115 grain, and in the uh, Remington RP9, I have got, uh, let's see, what is it? It's the uh, Minuteman Ammo 115 grain, and they're both hollow points. So the core bonds are bonded, and then the, uh, I don't think, I think they're semi-jacketed hollow points with the, uh, the Minuteman Ammo. But anyway, both these are safe now, so we can talk about them. I uh, verified to you, this is safe too. And it's got some pocket lint on it. Been carrying it a couple weeks. Looks like it's going to need some cleaning pretty soon. But, right. so some ways, let me turn the camera down just a little bit, to conceal carry are four o'clock position. That's one of my preferred ways, okay? Now, another one of my, my preferred ways is in a pocket holster, in the pocket, okay? Now, I don't always carry both these firearms, but if I'm going to be out in town or traveling any length of time in the state or in my neighboring state of Georgia, which has a good rapport with us, you know, as far as Second Amendment, uh, what you call it, uh, I forget what you call it right now, but they honor our Second Amendment laws as long as it's concealed, you're good to carry in Georgia. You can't open carry in Georgia if you're from Tennessee, but you can conceal carry. So they got a pretty good relationship there. But like, if I'm going to be doing anything like that, uh, I carry both of them. Sometimes when I'm just on the go, and I carry an extra magazine for both of them. And I usually carry them in my left pocket here. Now, if I'm just going to be on the go, a lot of times, and I just want to travel out, I'll, I'll carry this Kimber Micro 9 in this pocket holster. And you can see in this pocket holster, it looks like there's something in my pocket. Yeah, these pants are stained from a permanent marker. But that's another long story. Uh, as you see in my pocket, it don't really look like a farm. This looks like I'm carrying a phone or a wallet or something in my front pocket, okay? And it's an easy way to access pocket holster down in there, which I didn't do when I put it back down in there. So make sure you don't draw it when you're drawing. I mean, it may not be as fast as the inside the waistband draw or outside the waistband draw, but you can get it out and you can get it to work, okay? So that's pocket carry. It's a good, easy way to do it. And I feel pretty safe with it. All right, now, taking the big RP9 so y'all can see it good, which is one of my favorite pistols. All that was giving me a heck about that, but uh, it's one of my favorite pistols. And I've made it where it's a great pistol. All right, like I say, you got the four o'clock position. All right, and you can carry that inside or outside the waistband. But if you carry it outside the waistband, you won't carry it concealed. You gotta have a longer cover garment. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm mostly going to be talking about inside the waistband. So, uh, there's a small in the back position you can carry it. I don't recommend that because if you fall straight on your back, you could damage your spine. All right. But some people get away with it. Some people work with it. And that's what they like to do. All right. Then you can carry it in the hip inside the waistband. That's not very comfortable for me. Now, I can carry very comfortably if I've got one of my outside the waistband holsters like that. If I'm open carry it. Or if I've got a long cover garment that day, pretty comfortable, okay? Now, the other way is appendix, okay? Another way. And that's one of the most popular methods right there. Uh, and they say it's one of the most popular to get your gun out, get it in position, and ready to fire. They say it's one of the most fastest ways, I mean, one of the best ways, quickest ways. Uh, but a lot of times when I see somebody carrying appendix, it kind of goes right here. And so it's kind of in a dangerous area. So I don't like doing that because, you know, you might accidentally shoot yourself in one of your main arteries in your leg, or you might actually shoot something that's important to you, depending on the length of the barrel of the pistol and, you know, endowment of something else or whatever. But uh, anyways, I don't like that method. My favorite method inside the waistband is in the four o'clock position. And I, you know, I'm not the fastest. But I can get it out and get it on target within three seconds. Okay? 
that's me being a little bit cold when it's cold out here. Now, that's just a basic draw and bringing it up to your eye. What I've been practicing on and what I like to do is I like to get in what I call the ready stance, which is the isosceles stance. Let me pull the gun out and show you. The isosceles stance is basically here, okay? Feet, shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent forward just a little bit, and weight just a little bit forward. That's the isosceles stance, okay? And then, of course, the final arms up to your eye. Now, the other way, another way is, uh, and you need to know this position too, it's called the weaver stance. All right, so if I'm right handed, my back foot is going to be back here. My front foot is going to be here. That's the waiver stance. Okay? Let me get up a little bit closer. And that's a pretty good way. It throws my aim off just a little bit. But that's a pretty good way to do it. That's the way a lot of old timers do it. And that's the way a lot of militaries around the world train. Uh, also, uh, if you actually got a long gun, if you think about it, that's the position you're going to be in, is in the waiver stance from right handed, in your shoulder, and right handed. Now, there's a, also another position you need to know, which is the reverse, the reverse waiver stance, which is here. Okay? So, even though I'm right handed, I've got my back foot forward, my left foot forward, I mean, my left foot back, my right foot forward, and I'm here. Now, the reason you probably need to know those is because you will go in and out of those positions if you're moving with a firearm draw and at the re either at the ready or, or up here ready to go. You will be moving in those positions. So, let me show you. Taking slow, deliberate steps, kind of on my toes, but you go in and out of all three of those positions. Okay. But what I've been getting at with the classes I've been I, I've took and stuff is a little bit wider ready position in a sausage stance. Let me show you that. And then yeah, I can pull it back to the high compressed ready and move back and forth if I need to. I'm bent forward a little bit. I can go straight out like that. I can twist this way. I can twist that way real easy. I can take off running in any direction I need to. Real easy. Okay. So that being said, that's just a little bit basic of stances. One more stance and then we'll move on. Okay. That is... The one-handed weaver stance. Okay, it's a basic weaver, reverse weaver stance. You got your lead hand, you got your gun hand, your right hand forward, the reverse of your left. You got your support hand right here. All right, and you're right that right there. And when I shoot one-handed, I tend to do the tactical. I lean it a little bit like this. That way it's offset. That way I got a better grip on the gun. Okay, I got more support. All right. So that's the basic shooting stances. There's all kinds of videos on those you can look up and uh, everything like that. But I just wanted to go over some of the uh, shooting stances and methods for concealed carry. There's also like shoulder carry, you go jacket and a shoulder holster, you know, there's a lot of different ones. There's a leg carry, if you're carrying open, you can have a leg holster. That way you kind of draw it like cowboy style. And that is a really quick one. But, uh, you know, a lot of times the leg holster is not that practical, you know, and uh, everything. And any time you're drawn from the holster practicing or anything, whether it's unloaded or unloaded, remember our guns are always loaded, always have the muzzle pointed in a safe direction where you're not going to hurt anybody in case it goes off. And always index, 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 index. The only time you touch that trigger is when you're ready to pull the trigger. 
But otherwise, the finger is indexed. It's somewhere other than the trigger in the trigger guard. Okay, it's indexed. But anyway, uh, that's just my thoughts on it. I'm gonna go into some uh, actual drawing and doing some uh, doing some live fire and uh, things of that nature. Uh, one more thing I'll show you before I get I get going is you know that ready stance I was talking about. It uh. Get my shirt out of the way here. That's one thing you gotta be careful about too. Get your shirt and your holster or anything like that. Uh, to get in the ready stance I was talking about, which is here, I gotta get off the X. So what that means is when I draw, I take a big step this way, or big step this way, and I draw. That gets off the X. That just gets me off of where I stand it just enough that it might offset my attacker. And it gets me naturally in my good stance here where I can protect myself, where I can take off and move in whatever direction. So that's called getting off the X. But anyways, you know, I'm not the best at this stuff or anything like that. Uh, but uh, we're going to be going through some whole bunch of live fire drills and stuff like that. So I hope you all enjoy that. And I really had to get this video out here before I did it. No, we're losing the light and everything. It was kind of a little bit boring. But if... I'm doing a series on a, a 2021 series on pistol safety, which I'm doing. Y'all got to know that, and I've got to share that, or I don't feel uh, like I did my job. And what I'm doing, I'm just showing you how I do things. I'm not telling y'all to do it that way. I'm tell, I'm just showing you how I do it. That way you can look at it, see if there's something in there that sparks your interest. Go do your own research and see if it's right for you. That's that's all I'm doing. We're showing you what I do and uh, motivating you to find out what you need to do. But anyways, thank y'all for watching the Main Man channel. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next time.